Well, Monday is World Autism Day, and ahead of that, we are getting some new insight on the condition in this country. Now, this is according to a new report from the Public Health Agency of Canada, and it says an estimated one in every 66 Canadian children and youth, aged 5 to 17, has autism spectrum disorder. Autism is much more prevalent in boys than girls, but experts don't know why. And more than half of children and youth were diagnosed by age 6. But while awareness of the neurological condition grows, overcoming common misconceptions is still a big challenge. And that said, each person with autism is very unique. Symptoms might be very mild in some people, quite severe in others. And that does mean therapies differ from person to person and from family to family. Well, we're now joined by Michael Primo. He and his wife founded an organization called Path of Play. It's an annual event that supports children with special needs. Michael joins us now from his basement in Brampton, Ontario. Uh, welcome, Michael. Nice to have you on the program. So he's calling me Mike, but I'm going to call you Michael for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because we have, that, to, we have to point out that... My you, mother would be very happy to hear Michael, so yeah, I'm doing it for her. Yeah, my, my mother cringes with Mike too, so you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> that said, Michael is a producer here at CBC, but he has a great story, which is why we want him on the program today. And that great story, Michael, begins in your basement. Tell us about what's behind you right now. Well, behind me are three pinball machines. If I just lean briefly here, you can see the other two in the back. Uh, the one closest to me is a dialed-in made by Jersey Jack Pinball just last year, so they, they still make them. And it's one of the uh, things that we have in our basement to use for a project that we started a year ago called Path of Play. And tell us about that. Path of Play has been a wonderful, incredible, unexpected journey that started late last spring. Uh, our own son, Luke, was diagnosed to be on the spectrum in January of 2017, and when that happened, there was a great deal of confusion. We, we didn't know what to think or feel. We just knew we had to try and talk to as many people as we could to learn about their experiences. And from the day of diagnosis leading up to the day that we got him in for early intervention, we went down a private route. So that, that time period wasn't very long, but I noticed that in between there was this gap. There were Meaning, means of support missing that I thought could help him. And only through my own passions of gaming, video gaming, pinball, board games, whatever, I, I love it all, I found that he was really gravitating toward my passion. And it was a relief to be able to find a way to connect with him because that's one of the most important things parents seek out when they realize their kids are on the spectrum is how can we connect with our child? And when that happened in our home, I started thinking that there might be some merit to the idea of hosting what I like to call a family game day. And so usually we have this once a month and we invite families who are living with autism to come into our home. It's a free play environment. They just come and play pinball or board games or they play with toys. And where Luke has been going for his therapy in Woodbridge, um, they actually offer their time on the weekend to come and help support us to be there for the kids. And Let me the end result Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let me jump in there because, you know, you're, you're talking yeah. about a sense of connection, a, a sense of community, but you also mm -hmm. mentioned therapy. How does this pinball play, this game, this day of uh, game play, how does that aid in therapy with those who've been diagnosed with autism? It's, you know, that's somewhat of a mystery. Um, I mean, you're just trying to find any form of play or anything at all that a, a, a child on the spectrum can connect with. But I think what allows us to use play as, as a tool to, to let these kids come out of their shell is that this environment is for them first. We try to make play and therapy uh, f sort of bond together. Uh, and it really helps to have the therapist there because they bring a lot out of these kids um, and, and it frees the parents up as well. They have uh, a therapeutic experience as well because they spend day in, day out just trying to take care of a lot of these triggers that kids have based on their behavioral traits. So play takes on another form in this environment because it's a, it's a free play environment. There's no itinerary. Um, and it's not only just for families who are living with autism, but we also have families not impacted by special needs. And what ends up happening is it becomes an ultimate awareness tool. And there isn't that act of detachment that we can experience when we don't understand autism. That is what I think allows 
these kids to put their best foot forward when we had these family game days. And is there a spillover effect outside of the game days themselves? Is there a spillover in terms of behavior, in terms of uh, the challenges or perhaps less challenge uh, after going through a day like a game of play? There are many times where I have seen um, families come in and they, the first thing they say to me is, he, he might need a little bit of time or she might need a little bit of time to warm up. And uh, again, I go back to the uh, working professionals that we have here on the site. They just bring the best out of these kids. And, and it's not too long before, not only where parents are engaging with each other, but all the kids are engaging with each other. And you start to realize that once these kids get themselves into an early intervention program and they can get the therapies they need to learn to cope, you know that they're going to um, progress in a way that is just beautiful to watch. We've had the same experience with our own son in the last year, what he was struggling with in the beginning, Michael, and what he's been able to do uh, in terms of embracing and wanting to be a part of different social environments is just, in some ways, we weren't sure we were gonna get to that point, and we're very thankful that we've been able to do that. And we have to say you have a big event coming up at the end of April. Tell us about the event and tell us what you hope other Canadians get out of sharing your story and what you're doing to essentially encourage your son to come out of his shell? Well, Path of Play Day happens on April 28th, and it's a celebration day um, that we are going... Oh, there's Luke in the background there. He might come and say hello really quick, but um, we, are, we are banding arms with fellow gamers all around the world who know about this project. They're going to take a little bit of time to... Hi, Luke. You want to come here? You want to say hi? Just say hi, Michael. You can hi, Michael. You hi, go. Luke. <laughs> but, but where's Michael? I he can't, can't see Michael, <laughs> but he's there. He's there. So we're we're banding arms with fellow gamers, board gamers, pinball players all around the world, and we're going to be live streaming uh, from our basement. We're going to have a lot of people here playing games and, and having another family game day. And uh, we're going to be using the hashtag play for autism. And while we're live streaming, people are going to post their social media pictures and their thoughts on their own gaming experiences that day. And we're going to uh, we're going to band arms and celebrate the efforts that we've put into trying to reach out to these families. So it's it's going to be a really exciting day, and we're really looking forward to it.